Hi friends, welcome and welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, we talk about knits. Today is actually a Knits and Babbles, the second last of the year, almost last because we are now in December. It's crazy, we're already in December. Time flies when you're having fun. But yeah, 11 out of 2023. And today I decided to put on my Marseille sweater because I just depilled it and removed all the little floofy lints. So this is the first Marseille that I ever knit up. It is knit up in Gazelle yarn, which is a Turkish yarn brand. And this is their 100% baby alpaca. And in the, I forget what the name, I don't have the label anymore, but it's the 100% baby alpaca. And these are two natural colors. These are undyed wool. So the brown and the kind of off white cream. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, <laughs> one reason why I don't wear this one too much is because when I had knit it up, like I think now it's gonna be almost two years, I picked up a bit, extra few stitches on this sleeve. So there is a little, a little bump. This side seems to be fine. It's just one sleeve. And I only noticed it after I washed and blocked it. I'm not gonna undo a full sleeve just for that. Maybe I could, I don't know, we'll see. It doesn't really bother me. If it bothers you, well, Let's get into the finished knits for November. We have quite a lot, a lot of little things. Bring my coffee closer because I don't trust myself. Coffee next to cream knits, it's a disaster. So we're gonna start off a little bit strong. The first pattern I wanna talk to you guys about isn't actually a finished knit of this month. It is something that I'm very, very proud of. And I, had you told me a year ago I would be doing this, I would have, I don't know, I, I wouldn't think that I would. I wouldn't think that I would. The reason why I'm adding it to the beginning is because it is the leftover candy socks. What's new about it this month is that the pattern is available over on Ravelry. So I have both pairs. These were the large that are knit up for my boyfriend. And then these are the OG, the original design. This is knit up in Tough and Tender from Crafty Jack's Boutique. I think it's Tough and Tender. It is 90% Tarji wool and then the rest is nylon and the socks worked up beautifully. I will link the pattern in the description down below. I highly recommend you guys go check it out. So what inspired me to actually knit these up was Socktober, which is kind of like an event where everybody knits socks during the month of October. You see how many you can knit up. And what I wanted to do was after going to Knit City, I had discovered this beautiful yarn right here. And I knew that I wanted to make some little ankle socks. I got really inspired by everybody's beautiful socks and I just decided to design and knit up my own. So we made a video about it. I will link it somewhere about how I came up with this design. After that, I was like, you know what? And make this my very first pattern in the knitting world. And from then on, now I am designing so many more designs. So the way the socks are knit up, it's a lovely half twisted rib at the top, which is still kind of stretchy. This yarn is in fact a three ply yarn with a nylon in it. I thought it would be so unique and beautiful to have a twisted rib as a back heel accent. The rib keeps it thick, but at the same time, it kind of unifies with the top. So I thought that that would be really, really pretty. And then it's just like a flat stockinette stitch under your heel. So you're not walking on a twisted rib. It is just a beautiful stockinette sock with a lovely toe decrease. Colors are I think this one is Morning in the Mountain, and then this one is Au Naturel, because I believe that the white is their undyed natural wool. This was the first time I worked with this yarn. I love it. It feels really, really nice. I believe it's a super wash wool, but it really doesn't feel like one because it doesn't give you that like silky, shiny feeling that most super wash wools will give. I find super wash to feel almost like an acrylic, like in the way that it's like silky, shiny, kind of plasticky and I know that's the coating and how they do it, but I'm not crazy about it. So if you guys haven't had the time to go check out the pattern, the link will be in the description down below. Check it out please. And let me know if you guys do cast them on. And if you do remember to tag me in your posts or anywhere that you share the photo, I would love, love, love to see um, all the beautiful socks that get knit up with these. That leads me into my next pattern that I wanna talk about because it is also a new design and it is the lovely hat. This was originally called the blueberry hat and I think we're gonna stick with it because I love berries and I think it would be super cute to have a full on berry collection. 
It is a lovely, beautiful hat with a very nice, interesting star decrease at the center. And again, there is a video for this knit and how to knit it up and how I came up with this design. Currently right now, I am writing up the pattern for this lovely beanie, this lovely hat, and hopefully I can get it out as well. And this would be the second official pattern I released. In the past, I did release patterns, but they're untested and they are not tech edited, so they're free. And now I wanna take my designer journey a little bit more serious. I am slowly starting to get into actual process and making sure that the pattern actually really works for all sizes, having multiple sizes, and just making sure that people are happy when they knit up my designs. So this blueberry hat is actually based off a much older blueberry hat. This is one that I knit up two years ago now, I think, or a year ago. This is a free pattern that I put over on my website, and it just has one size. Some of the differences are if you look, the rib, it is a lot shorter. And now that I look back, this rib is way too short. So I extended the cable rib and detail. So this is a two by two rib hat. And I reworked the decreases, how they work up at the top. It now just follows, the rib follows all the way to the tip compared to this one, the original one, where it kind of changes from a two by two rib into a one kind of raglan decrease. The, the decreases kind of work up like a raglan. The hat is knit on with a tubular cast on compared to this one, which was just a traditional regular long cast on, long tail cast on. This is knit with a worsted weight and a mohair held together. So I think that creates an air in weight. This one was just knit with a worsted weight. Now what I'm doing is working on the sizing. This is the woman's small, so I'm gonna make a large, and I think I'm gonna make a child size, or maybe a teen size. So you start off with a tubular, and then you knit the detailing, the cables, and the rib at the, at the border. And then you knit the hat inside out, and then you work the decreases inside out. And then when you, so that when you are done, and then you fold over the, the border, you have your detailing here. So in order to have that, yes, the hat is knit inside out. That is one thing that is really interesting about this hat, which makes it really fun and unique to work up. I haven't seen a hat knit like this before. So that is what I'm working on right now. Now that the socks are released, we are going to be releasing the blueberry hat at some point, and hopefully I can get it over to the tech editor soon. And then if you guys are interested in test knitting the hat, let me know in the comment section down below. I will add you to the growing list of um, people who are interested. The next pattern that I finished is of course my Drops of Memory shawl. We finally, finally finished it and I used up all of the cashmere yarn that I had. This is using up four skeins of the Lang Cashmere Premium, so it's 100% cashmere. This is what it looks like. It's a beautiful gray with little blue kind of flecks and specks in it and it, I think it's like a charcoal gray. And the shawl is knit up in a half moon style. So it's a little big for me to hold on camera, I can't really. <laughs> the shawl is knit up in a half moon style, so you start at the center, and then as you go back and forth, you make increases, and it kind of just does that. It is just stockinette knit with a kind of garter stitch hem on the side and then you have a cable sort of twist detailing you have a crisscross detailing here which then leads into a rib another crisscross and then finish off with a rib to avoid the curling at the edge i ended up finishing with an italian bind off the pattern does call for just any bind off it doesn't say it just says bind off the stitches this is a pattern from the lovely 52 weeks of shawl this is the second shawl that i knit up from this book. Both shawls were DK weight. There's one end I need to weave in, the very first end. I have worn it with this kind of sticking out. I just haven't gotten around to doing it. So this pattern comes with two sizes. I knit kind of like an in-between size, I would say. I saw someone else do this over on Ravelry because I had, I think, about 100 yards or 100 meters more than the pattern called for. And I wanted to use as much yarn as possible. So what I did is I, well now that I'm wearing it, you can't see. Okay, one second. If you look at the detailing here, this little cable section is much smaller than this one here. And this rib section is much smaller. So this is the original 
size that the pattern calls for. And what I did is in the second twist, I extended it. I think I doubled how many repeats there are here compared to here. And then for the rib, I went as much as I could before I needed to bind off. I tried to go as far as I could. I think in the end, because I increased both section, it kind of looks uni unified. I find it looks like a planned, you know, like it gets longer as it goes on. So if I had even more yarn, I probably would have repeated this and then made the third, added a third section and made that even bigger than the second. So it kind of does like a stepped ladder effect. Um, I think that it's not as noticeable because I did see some people just make the rib longer and then it looks a little off-putting. It does take a little bit more work and calculation to figure out to increase detailed section compared to just rib. In the end, by doing that, that also made it a lot longer, not just in length, but in width. So this was the first time that I knit with cashmere yarn and it is super, super soft. This yarn worked up really, really well and it was really easy to spit splice and get back together. The only thing is we'll see in time if cashmere pills. I don't know, but it is super, super light. It is warm and it is very, very soft. It's pretty soft, yeah. I think I forgot to mention it. This pattern is from the 52 Weeks of Shawl and it is the Autumn Vibes Shawl. So I guess the things that are finished this month are relatively small <laughs> because the next patterns that I finish are actually these two cute little ornaments. These are free patterns over on Ravelry for little knit ornaments, the mini Christmas stocking pattern. And what I really liked about this one is it really takes up like no yarn. I think it took five yards of yarn or is that five meters and six yards? I don't know. It really, really doesn't take a lot. I did the fair aisle sock. There are eight different variations to color work on the sock, or you could just do it not color work. What is interesting is the sock is knit in the flat and then you seam it up along the back. So the whole sock is worked in knit and pearls and it has a cute little garter stitch hem at the top to kind of make it a little bit more like a stocking and kind of have like it not, not curl. And I used some fingering weight for this. This was, this is Shetland wool mixed with, I think this was the leftover Regia sock yarn that I had from the socks I knit up last year. But yeah, so this only took an afternoon to knit up. And then I have this lovely star as well. This was knit up in a mohair that I had left over. Sadness Garn Duo. I think this is the Stra Straja star. I'm, star. I'm gonna put the name here. I'm not 100% sure because I'm not 100% sure how to say it. What is really interesting about this pattern is that there are two options. I knit the option B because I think the option A doesn't have the pearl row in between the legs of the star. And I wanted to help define the star shape a little bit more it just took me a little while to figure out how to do how to follow the pattern but once i got it it went pretty smooth and both sides are worked up the same you cast on the stitches live stitches and then you decrease to the center and then tie weave in your end and tie and pull the center really close together and then you pick up the stitches along the side again and work the decreases to the center stuff it and then tie it Pull it together so that the sides are more or less kind of like seamless and follow through and yeah you end up with a really cute star again these are really easy projects to make really fun they're free patterns over on Ravelry and right now for the holidays there are so many patterns available for cute ornaments so now we are going to go into the whips department the next item I want to talk to you guys about is my uh, well you guys can see it it's the Moby sweater the Moby sweater by Petite Knit and we finished one sleeve and I am slowly working on the second sleeve. I have a question for you guys. If you knit this up, how long did it take you to knit a sleeve? Because this sleeve took me two weeks. This is the longest sleeve I've, like this sleeve just takes so much time. And I don't know if it's because it's the seed stitch or the cables or something or maybe because I know I'm knitting it I take really really long but this sleeve just took forever I really really like the way it looks I love the sweater I'm excited to be able to wear it and hopefully my goal is to finish it for the holidays but I don't know what it is these sleeves are just killing me I am knitting the small but I am using seven millimeter needles instead of six 
which is I think US 4.5 instead of US 4. The reason I am doing that is because I am knitting this up in Drops Charisma and Drops Kid Silk Mohair. This pattern calls for a DK weight yarn, but I'm already using a DK. Charisma is naturally a DK weight and I wanted a mohair. So that kind of creates, is that a worsted? I am knitting up one size in yarn. So what I ended up doing was using bigger needles to compensate for that. Just going up 0.5 of a millimeter to help with that. And then I, no, that's not true. I'm knitting the extra small now because I'm using bigger needles. I am knitting a small, an extra small to then make it fit. The extra small is a bit smaller. The needles are bigger. The material worked up is a bit bigger. The yarn is bigger. So it kind of, it kind of evens out because this is the second time I'm knitting this. The first time I did knit it on six millimeter needles and the fabric was way too tight, way too dense. However, by changing sizes like that and kind of like mix and matching the needles with the yarn and the all that stuff, it did make it tricky to line up because when you knit up the front and the back, the back is, I believe, 10 rows longer than the front but you need them to line up so that when you continue, it's seamless and just the front and the back match. That was a little bit tricky to get them to line up. I don't remember necessarily what I did, but I know I did have to do a few rip backs and just, it ended up working really, really well, but I do remember it was a little bit of a brain teaser for a while just because to get those two to line up. That is the only PSA if you do decide to change your needles or uh, go up or down a size and play around with the yarn. As long as you're aware that the front and the back need to line up at one point. And then we have our lovely four inch rib at the bottom of the sweater. <laughs> because it took two weeks for one sleeve. But hopefully in the next two weeks we will be done and we will be casting off the sweater and I can finally wear it for you guys. I can't wait. It feels like a really long time since I finished a sweater for myself. The last knit I knit for myself was my Friday tee in July. Damn, so that means that my last full on sweater was the Marseille sweater, the brown one that we knit in like April or March. I haven't finished a sweater since then, like a full on winter sweater. Oh my God. The next project that I wanna to talk to you guys about is another petite knit. And this is the first, this was the first pattern that I ever bought. And I don't know why I never knit it up, but we're finally getting around to it, is the champagne cardigan. And for this one, we have two sleeves. See, these sleeves took me like a day or two each. Max two days each. So that would be four days for two sleeves. Do you see the difference between <laughs> So this is the Novice Cardigan by Petite Knit. It is a full mohair sweater. This is two strands of mohair held together. I am knitting it in the color Marzipan by Knitting for Olive. And I love this cardigan so much. And right now, all we have to do is finish the body. I think I'm missing an inch or two on the body. Then we can do the rib. Yeah, I am knitting this on six US six, which is four millimeters. That is the correct needle size. I didn't play around with this one and I'm knitting the extra small, but it is pretty big, honestly. I don't know what it is with petite knit. I feel like her sizes are relatively big and I don't know if that's just because she's really tall or if people from over there are just really tall. I don't know. One thing that is interesting to note about this cardigan is if you are a beginner and you want to try mohair you know you don't think that you're ready for this you are because this cardigan is possibly the simplest cardigan one of the easiest cardigans to knit up i was really intimidated this being my first mohair only knit i was worried that it was going to be too complicated and that it was going to be tough to knit with the mohair but it isn't again what's really nice about it is the sleeves you just pick up and knit and just do one decrease round at the tip before doing the cuff the rib the body again you just pick up the stitches and knit stock and knit knit back and forth and then you do the hem at the bottom. The yoke is relatively easy because you just do increases every couple of rows for one row, knit like nine rows, one row of increases, knit like again, six or nine, one row of increases. It is a lot of just mindless knitting stockinette. You just knit. So it's a really nice pattern to have if you are going out to dinner and you just wanna mindlessly knit as you're out with friends or at a coffee shop, you just wanna mindlessly knit or watching a movie, it's a perfect pattern for that because you don't need to have the pattern with you. It is very easy and due to the fact this is mohair, it makes it look a lot more fancy. The mohair makes this look really, really nice. 
So as I mentioned, this is knitting for Olive. I'm holding two strands together. And I think so far, this is my th seventh skein of the Knitting for Olive mohair. This is the first time I'm using this yarn and I really, really like it. The silk is a lot thicker than a drops. And I like the mohair part of it a little bit more on the Knitting for Olive than on the drops. I don't know which part of the sheep this is, but it just feels a little bit nicer than the drops. But honestly, the difference, the drops is half the price and the difference is really, really not that much. They do have completely different color ways and color options. Netting for Olive has so many more colors. So it really depends on your budget and what kind of look you want to go for. Hopefully I can finish the body of my cardigan and I think I have extra buttons somewhere that I can potentially add to it but I really really like this one it is like a cloud so the last pattern that I want to talk to you guys about is one that I'm very very excited about and it is actually this turtleneck so this is a pattern that I am designing and was inspired after while I was doing the test knit going through the the issues and fixing them and talking with the lovely knitters it kind of inspired me and made me realize i actually really like designing and it's very stressful <laughs> when people caught on to mistakes i did have a few panic attacks there were there was a moment where i was like why am i doing this in the end it all worked out the pattern is beautiful that whole panic moment inspired me to make a sweater <laughs> the chaos inspired me to knit up a sweater so this is the sweater is there a purple berry I'm gonna find a berry name for this. It is a beautiful sweater that is gonna be knit up in stockinette, but with some lovely double ribbing detail. I wanted a really chunky turtleneck where the ribbing leads all the way down the arms into the ribbing of the cuff. So that is the original design and plan. This is yarn from Kensington Prairie Farm. It is, I had to unravel a little bit, so I'm sorry, but the yarn is this beautiful purple kind of lilac and it is from Kensington Prairie Farm. It is their 100% baby alpaca, and I'm holding it with Drops Kids Silk Mohair, a little pink one. I chose this one because, because this pink was the only pink I really liked. I didn't wanna go with a purple mohair because I didn't want to make this more uh, mauve or the purples that are in mohair are just too, I couldn't find the right purple to go with this yarn. They're just too purple. So I decided to kind of go with a little light pink to kind of mute it a little bit. If you remember in my past videos, I said that this is not my typical color. I chose this color because I was inspired by TikTok, that trend where everybody was trying to figure out their color palette. Apparently this color discovered works really well with my complexions. I got out of my comfort zone and picked a little mauve. So we'll see in the end if this does work for me. I am currently working on the yoke and then hopefully we can separate for the sleeves and start doing the body and the sleeves. I'm also planning on having some more detailing along the body and the cuff. There are other details I want to add. I did use a tubular cast on for the collar to kind of have that fold over but keep it nice and thick. Yeah, so far this is probably one of my softest knits. The baby alpaca and the mohair work really, really well together. I love the natural fuzz of the mohair. I ended up pairing it with a mohair because I thought that the baby alpaca was going to be too fragile and too... Alpaca tends to stretch a little bit and just like droop. And I think holding it with a mohair, which is 30% silk, which has a silk lining inside, would also help with the stru structural design. It did lighten up the purple a little bit but I thought that that was an essential element to add just to have, make sure that it doesn't droop too much or stretch out too much. Also a little fun fact, and I wanna say thank you. The day that we released this pattern, not only was it my first ever pattern release, but it was the day that we actually got 2000 subscribers here on YouTube. I wanna thank you all so much for joining my little family. This wouldn't be possible without you guys. And it just made November 30th even more special. Let's talk about yarn stash. So we're just gonna quickly recap. In October, we started off 215 skeins of yarn and we ended up with 201. So that means that during the month, we knit with 15 skeins, which is pretty, that's a pretty decent amount of yarn. So basically for the month of November, we used up a little bit less yarn, mainly because we knit a lot of small items for the Moby sweater, I ended up using another two skeins. 
for the novice cardigan i ended up using four skeins for the sleeves and the body and then for the hat i ended up using 1.5 so then we used up another one and a half skeins for the hats and the ornaments so that is 194. The Moby sweater I just finally opened up the last skein of the knitting for all of, of the tinsel mohair and the drops charisma so that brings us down to 192. I think this is the lowest I've been so far since we started this journey. So we just went down to 192. However, I do anticipate this may be going up because I'm going to be visiting my sister for the holidays in Buffalo before going to Montreal to visit my family. That is true during that time i don't really know if i'm going to be able to film or upload videos i'll try so but we'll see so i think that the de-stashing is working really well and we are using up more than we are buying right now and i'm very very excited about that that is the goal the goal isn't to go down to zero the goal is just to use more than i buy so i can just reduce how much I buy. I think that that wraps up everything we knit up during the month of November. So November was a really fun month. And so thank you guys so much for coming. Hope you guys have a lovely, beautiful day. And if you're knitting holiday presents, I wish you the best because it's always stressful to knit for others. <laughs> and hope I wish that you do finish your projects in time. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you all later. Bye.